everybody, good morning. Welcome to Stitch Mania Day 13, the Dark 13 Stitching Edition. For those who have been with me for a while, perhaps seeing this fabric, you already know what I'm working on today. Today is my last whip for Stitch Mania 2020. It's all new starts from here on out. We're all downhill. <laughs> so, uh, let me show you what I am working on today. I am working on probably one of my least popular whips, but it's one that makes me super happy every time I get to pull it out. This is the Horror Movie Alphabet by Clouds Factory. And I just love these little horror icon weebles. <laughs> I don't know why, but they make me so happy. They're just adorable, but also, you know, menacing. <laughs> anyway, um, so that is that is what I'm working on today. The fabric here is 32 count Belfast linen in a Lichens Moon by Under the Sea Fabrics, affectionately referred to as dried blood. Um, and uh, that is that's what I'm working on today. This fabric apparently is in the Under the Sea line, but it doesn't look like this anymore. Um, probably dyes change over the years. It's it's not this dark. Um, but I'm sure that there's comparable, like, bloody maroon looking colors. And I just saw that Brittany at Ingleside Imaginarium, who coincidentally named this fabric Dried Blood, she dyed a couple of pieces that kind of look like that. So that's that's kind of fun. Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent here. Um, so that that's what I'm working on today. Um, I've done quite a bit of bouncing around. Uh, let's see, we have those guys and then we have Otis Driftwood and Jigsaw down or oh goodness Pinhead sorry Pinhead he's my favorite I th yeah that was mean um, and then rolled up here is Jason um, I think I'm gonna go back to the top though I think I'm gonna start working my way that away hopefully I can get two characters done today Chucky's got a little bit more confetti Dracula is a lot of black so I am and confetti in these is, I mean, it's a few onesies and twosies, but it's not true confetti. Anyway, I'm on a whole nother level today. <laughs> so I'm going to try to do Chucky and Dracula today. I'm also going to try to do my floss storage because I owe that to you. And I've been promising it for a couple days. So that's going to happen today. Uh, so stay tuned. I will see you guys in a hey little while. How's it going? So it's about 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I thought that I would pop in and show you guys my progress so far. Chucky is done. How cool. Um, so yeah, he took like three hours to stitch, which is so ridiculous. It should not have taken that long. But I can name the reasons why and their names are Amy Gable Stitcher and Caitlin Madam Ice you two sending me out shopping <laughs> and all I did was try to watch your floss tube videos <laughs> so if y'all are watching this um, thank you for the enabling I will show my purchases in a later video <laughs> yeah uh, it's it's been a morning um, so that's why Chucky has taken so much longer to stitch than he should have. And oh my goodness, I just realized he doesn't have eyes yet. Be right back. <laughs> okay, that's better. <laughs> Chucky needed eyes. He looks pretty cool without eyes, a little bit soulless and maybe more Chucky-like. But um, yeah, he needed eyes. So Chucky is now officially done. Um, and uh, I, yeah, I think he turned out really cool. Um, I have decided that on this piece, and I've done it so far except for pinheads, pins, um, I'm doing the back stitch with two strands just to really emphasize those points. Um, especially with Chucky's scars here, Chucky's scars for real are red and kind of bloody. Um, and so they really needed to be a little bit more prominent uh, than just the one strand. I'm also doing most, for the most part, long stitches. Um, just again, to make them stand out a little bit. And this fabric does very strange things to 
the images that you see. I know that it kind of blows things out just a little bit. Anyway, so there's Chucky. Uh, while I was stitching on it, I was kind of reminiscing. <laughs> Who stitches horror movie weebles and reminisces? Um, I do. So I thought that I would kind of talk to you guys about like my horror movie history and like some of these weebles, I'm just gonna keep calling them that. Um, they have very special meaning to me. So Chucky, um, my late uncle, I believe it was his daughter and her husband, uh, lived in Chicago, either after college, it must have been, um, after college, and the apartment that they lived in was actually like one or two floors below where they filmed Child's Play, the first one. Isn't that cool? Like, <laughs> they they uh, they were living there, apparently, at the time of filming this. Um, let's see. Ghostface, so the Scream franchise. Um, my mom took me out of school, I think, for two movies that I can remember. The first was Titanic, and the second was, like, Scream 4, I think, 3 or 4. And... I grew up with horror movies and for whatever reason I was freaking out going to see this movie like I was scared out of my mind I was so just I don't know worried in ways that I didn't need to be um, and so my mom and my aunt actually um, they made a deal with me that if it got to be too much um, that we would we would leave and then about halfway through, I'm laughing. <laughs> so I guess they figured that I was okay. And we stayed for the whole thing. Um, let's see. Pinhead of the Hellraiser franchise. Um, Hellraiser Hellbound, which is the second in the series, is um, has been one of my favorite horror movies for a long, long time. I actually broke up with a guy when I was in like seventh grade. Because he was, like, getting sick while watching Hellbound. And <laughs> I was like, this isn't going to work. You and me are not going to make it. Um, so you got to go. Um, so, yeah, we broke up. Um, I haven't stitched Leatherface yet. Um, but I think I've told this story before. The One of the remakes of Texas Chainsaw Massacre... Uh, came out around my birthday, around my 17th birthday. And so for my very first rated R movie without my parents, um, without a parent or a legal guardian present, what have you, was supposed to be Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I have always looked a few years younger than I actually am. And so we go to the theater, try to buy the, the tickets, that I'm showing you this part of the fabric because Leatherface is going to go right here. Um, try to buy tickets and the guy's like, I'm going to need to see some ID. So I show him my ID. No problem there, except that like it's a totally legal ID and everything. It shows that I am recently turned 17. He thinks it's a fake and he is unwilling to sell tickets. So my friends and I that went to go see it we uh, we bought tickets to like a kids movie or something, and ended up sneaking into Le to uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, there's another one. Oh, Jigsaw. Speaking of uh, boyfriends that I broke up with because they couldn't handle it. In college, <laughs> I took two of my closest friends to go see. I think it was Saw Three. No. Yes. Saw three in the warehouse with the doctor. Y'all know the one. Um, and these are two of like some of like two of my closest friends from college. And they are both very wholesome ladies. <laughs> um, and uh, needless to say, they both slept on the floor of my dorm room that year because I traumatized them. <laughs> 
um, taking them to go see Saw 3. One of them, I think, got, got sick um, <laughs> after the movie. They were mad at me for a good long while for, for taking them to go see see that movie anyway so that's those are some of my horror movie stories um that are kind of interesting anyway um so like i said it's about 11 o'clock and i need to go take a break have a bite to eat and then i think i'm gonna film some stuff about floss storage um so this is gonna be a lengthy vlog today which is cool i'm down for it um so i will see you in the next clip i suppose Okay, everybody, so this is my thread stash. Forgive me. Um, the lighting in here is terrible. It's, it's actually Thursday morning, um, and it's a beautiful rainy day. <laughs> so the lighting is pretty awful. But um, my thread stash is in this hanging file cabinet. Um, I used bobbins for a lot of years. I'm still working through my bobbins, but I don't like them. Um, I don't like the kinks in the thread. Um, I don't like that there's nowhere to put like leftovers. So I switched up my method and I have been working on getting this all together. So I'm just gonna pull one out and sort of lay it here so that y'all can see this. So these are homemade uh, thread tags or thread keeps or what have you, whatever you wanna call them. Um, and then I take the skeins of DMC and I cut them up, put them on the, on the tags. I have these little one inch, hopefully you can see this, um, one inch binder rings. And then I took some old hanging file folders and just cut them up and then hole punch, punched them equidistant um, so that I could get, how many do I have on each? Looks like 10 or 11 on each. Yeah, 11 on each. Um, and so that's how I operate, so that I can I can string leftovers on there, um, half skeins, full skeins, whatever. There's no kinks going on. Um, and because it's pretty stagnant in here, things don't get tangled. Um, I know it looks like a bit of a rat's nest down there, but it's really easy, like, no problem. Take that out, so. Uh, that's what I'm doing. And then I have the 100s through 800s in here. And then the 900s through 3800s down here. So that is my master DMC storage. Okay, let's show you some other things. Okay, so now that you've sort of seen the master, master sets of my threads, um, let's talk about project kits. So I kit up threads into each of my projects. Um, I don't work from my master sets typically. So um, this one is the, the easiest one to go over real quick. This is the fancies. So if I'm using fancy threads, then the whole skein goes on. To be honest, typically speaking, if I'm working in DMC, I usually only put a length on each of my kits. Um, whereas fancies, I put the whole skein on just so that I'm not messing with dialots or whatever. So I've got the whole skein here um, ready to use. So that's the easiest one to go over. Okay, let's talk about another easy one. Um, this is my favorite for full coverage designs. Uh, these are the Paco thread organizers. I have purchased these from 123 Stitch. I bought them from Amazon. Um, I, I love these. I know that Amazon has, you can find some like off-brand ones that are a little bit shorter, but way cheaper. These are kind of pricey. They run like $25 a piece, which is a little annoying. Um, but I love these for full coverage designs. These are my ones for in this moment and I reach a point when I'm working on a project where if I don't know the number associated with the symbol, I know about where it is. So I know that this empty hourglass is on this side. I couldn't tell you what that number is, but I know it's on this side. Um, and each of these holds 50. So I have, I have two here for in this moment. I love these for full coverage. They are my favorite. Things get a little tangled, but every now and again, I just run my fingers through to, to straighten it out. And you can see there's just a length on each of those. So 
That's my favorite for full coverage designs. Something that a lot of my projects are done in are these flasway bags. Um, and so you can see here on the, on the back, I have the full length of thread. On some of these, I have a piece on the front. So those are leftovers from what I was stitching or whatever. Um, and so a lot of my projects are done like this because I was using this almost exclusively for years. I don't love this, if I'm honest. First of all, I don't love the plastic imprint. Um, it's, it's not my favorite to use a boatload of plastic. Second of all, I like what I like about the previous two methods is that I can see pretty clearly where I'm where I've got things missing. If I'm out of a fancy, I can see that empty card hanging. If I'm out of a DMC on my full coverage, there's an empty hook. With this, I've got to flip through each and every one of them to see what's on the back. That drives me a little bananas. Um, so I have used this for years and I'm not changing over like previously started projects from this. Um, but it's, it's not my favorite. Another thing that's not my favorite that I have used in the past, um, these are the low rand project cards. I have both 20s and 15s. I accidentally ordered the 15 space ones. Um, so that was kind of a bummer, but it's fine. I can still use them. Um, these are kind of like the cheap version of the Pacos, um, and, but with fewer colors. So I would need five of these to get four to hate. I don't love these because, well, the holes are kind of small and each of these is not reusable. Like I would have to white out this whole card to be able to reuse it in another project later on. So that's, that's kind of frustrating. Um, I like those methods that are reusable. And this is, if I'm honest, not very. I can use the back, I can use white out, but it's um, inconvenient, shall we say. So there's that. Um, I occasionally use these uh, in a pinch, but it's not my favorite. Okay, so what has become my favorite, um, and this is the final method that you'll see in my projects, um, are thread tags. So Emily C., uh, mentioned these. You guys saw in my master DMC that I have some homemade ones and those are great because they use up some scrapbook paper stash, but what a process. I mean, I have to spray glue the heavy card stock to the scrapbook paper, I have to line it up right, cut it, hole punch it, hole punch the top. Whereas these, I just ordered a mass of gift tags <laughs> and all I have to do is put my, uh, I think it's a one inch uh, hole punch through so that I can string thread through. The holes are big so I can get I can get in and out pretty easy. Each of these individually is technically reusable. I don't normally put the symbols on, on these, uh, but I did in this case. So I'll just have to scribble those out so that I can reuse this 221 in another project some other time. Um, my whole thing is I want to be able to reuse these methods as much as possible and sometimes um, some of them are not are not so like this anyway so um, and then there's just a length of DMC strung on there um, let's see if I'm kidding up a haid and I don't have the the Pacos then I will use these um, because I have a million of them and I have a million of them left over from projects over the last seven years or so. Um, so I will use those. I'm not likely to kit up a hate in this, mostly because it would use up like all of them that I have, which would be really quite annoying. Um, so that is my, my sort of kit methods. My favorite here or the Pacos if I can. So, um, yeah, that is, that is pretty much how I run my kit stash and how I kit up projects. Um, 
I hope that that answers everybody's question who has asked that over the years. And yeah, so I am going to end this off here and get you back to the other video. Hey there everybody, how's it going? I am coming to you with my final check-in for today. It's about a quarter to eight, uh, which is a little early for me to stop stitching. However, it's Wednesday, and Wednesdays are our big TV nights. Um, we like to watch Mass Singer live because spoilers happen, and um, the Survivor finale is tonight. And yes, we still watch Survivor, um, and that's tonight. So it's going to be big shows night. If I stitch, it's going to be knitting. <laughs> um, so I might pop in a clip of that or something at some point. But as far as the cross stitch is concerned, I'm all finished. But I reached a really good topping point. I got Dracula done. If I had been a little bit more focused in the middle of the day, I might have gone on and done Elvira. Uh, but that didn't happen, obviously. So I got I got Dracula done. And I can't stop saying Bella in my head like... That's not Dracula, that's Bella Lugosi. Anyway, um, so I I finished stitching him just now, um, and his skin tone is really pale, so you can't really see his teeth. You can't really see his teeth as charted. Um, so I went over and I back stitched them um, just once, just a little extra, just that they were a little bit more prominent. Um, so that his fangs stood out because Dracula needs his fangs. So um, that is my progress for day 13 of Stitch Mania 2020. This is my last whip for this mania, which is wild. I can't believe I have eight more new starts. <laughs> uh, but yep, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be new starts from here on through the 21st. Uh, so all of that to to say um, I'm gonna head off here um, this is probably gonna be my last talking point so I will see you all in the next one thank you all so much for watching um, thank you for sticking around for my daily mania videos I appreciate it it's a little unusual for me to film this much but um, anyway so I just I just want to say thank you I appreciate you guys um, like I said, I'll see you in the next one. As always, be kind.